Are helper and utility files signs of bad code? Hello, and welcome to Senior Code Review Buddy. My name is Chris, and today I'm going to talk about how helper files or utility files can be a sign of code that could be improved. Now, when I say this, I don't necessarily mean files that we describe as helper or utility files. Instead, I'm referring to files that are actually called helper or utility. So helper.py, utility.py, stuff like that. So why do I think having a file called helper.py can be a sign of code that can be improved? Well, what's the code in that file? From the name, we don't get any hints about what type of code might be in there, what classes it deals with, or what domains it falls into. If I've got a problem with a certain class in a project, could the code in that file help me? Maybe? And that's the main problem. With a generic name like helper or utility, we aren't communicating anything useful to the reader. It makes it hard for people to know when they should be looking in that file. And it also makes it hard to know what code should be added to that file. The scope and domain are unclear. I've often found that when I've put code into helper.py, it's usually a sign that I haven't thought hard enough, or really at all, about the domain of the new code or where it belongs. I just have some code that I know I need, so I put it in a generic file instead of thinking about what home would make sense. And I think you can apply this rule to classes, modules, anything else that has a name and contains code. It's always important to have meaningful names at every level of code. It's not just variable names or function names. And I think sometimes we get tripped up by thinking that the word helper or utility are more meaningful than I think they actually are by themselves. Now, I am guilty of putting code into a helper file that probably should have been in a better home. So let's walk through one of my helper files, look at all the public functions, and see if they are in the right home or not. This code is in a podcast program that I've been working on now for a number of years. I don't think this project is useful for anyone else to run, but since the code might be interesting, I figured I'd make it open source, so I did that recently. Uh, there's a link to it in the description below if you want to go and look at it. So let's dive into the code now. All right, so our first public function, we've got seconds to string. At a high level, this feels like, you know, it's some kind of time manipulation here because we're converting a time value to a string. So maybe it makes sense to put this somewhere like time helper, just be a little clearer that this is dealing with time. Although I wonder, I wonder why I didn't use just time delta and make it a string here. So I might not even need this function. I might be able to use some built-in Python stuff. So I think more research is needed on this one. Next up, we've got a pair that feel like they go together. We've got git album and we've got git title. So these functions are both dealing with extracting certain information either the album title or the name uh, from a file on disk. We're dealing with file metadata here, so maybe these functions would be more at home in something like file underscore metadata, or maybe audio underscore metadata, since this is sort of audio specific metadata we're dealing with here. That's probably a better spot for them. Now we've got prepare audio and move. This is a big function, and of all the code here, this is the least helpery one of the bunch. This function is something that I would describe as being part of the normal flow of this program. Like, if I had to make a diagram of sort of the flow, this would probably show up in the diagram. It's an important key component of what goes on and kind of is reasonable to describe at a high level. So having it kind of just shoved into a helper file feels wrong. I think this definitely needs a proper home. So at a high level, what this does is it's responsible for taking a file that I've decided I'm going to copy onto my phone and then kind of prepare it for that phone. So it does some stuff with metadata, basically setting up certain values that I want. And then we use FFmpeg to do a little bit of audio translation. We sort of normalize things and we potentially adjust the playback speed. 
right now, I'm not sure where this function should move. But I think the body could maybe be broken up into a few parts, uh, some helper functions. Like all of this metadata dealing with probably should go to that new metadata file I talked about earlier. And then this ffmpeg interaction stuff maybe could go into my ffmpeg helper file. And if we make those changes, this function becomes a lot smaller. And I think at that point, it might be clearer where this function should go. So although I can't visualize the home right now, I think if I was to make those changes, it'd be probably clear where the new smaller function should be living. And lastly, we've got another pair of functions, convert all MP4 to MP3 and convert all WebM to MP3. This one again seems pretty easy like our first pair. I think I should have a new file called conversions and both of those functions should live there because they're just dealing with converting files. It's a very sort of simple thing. Just put them in there. I think that's all we need to do for these ones. And that's it for now. Hopefully in the future, when you find yourself interacting with a file called helper or utility, you'll pause and see if there is a better home for that code. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing. If you have any comments, code you'd like me to review, or ideas you'd like me to talk about, please leave a comment below or reach me at chris at seniorcodereviewbuddy.com. Thanks, and have a great day.